how many of you have heard about blockchain technologies but still have no clue about what is going to change in the very near future? Yeah, raise a hand. Plenty of hands, for sure. Nobody knows. And for a reason. It's, get, it's very complicated and very new. Very new? I don't know. Last month, we were just celebrating the 10 years of the blockchain technologies. So I was just wondering why people still don't understand anything about blockchain. Is it difficult to understand? Let's have a look and let's see together something very simple. How our sector, our industry could maybe benefit from this technology. I've been in Avas group for a few years, and actually, I wasn't a blockchain guy. I don't look like a blockchain guy, I guess. I was in PR, and aside, was working for some startups. And one day, probably you saw it also, I discovered something funny. I discovered this paper. Blockchain, a trust machine? Wow, sounds good, because trust is actually, was actually my job as PR consultant. Our job in the industry of communication and advertising. Trust is what we are looking for, and this was sounding very good. But, you know, there's not any shop where you can buy a blockchain and say, OK, I have the trust. So basically, it was getting very difficult to help my clients to understand what it was. And so, at some point, I was just wondering, 10 years after the making of this technology, nobody seems to be using it, nobody seems to understand what it is, and nobody sees it. So is it really here? Do you think it's really here? Is it coming, or is it just a buzzword? A buzzword? Well, let's have a look for just one second. I'm going to be very, very boring for one minute, but. Just have a look to the numbers. It's coming. I'm not saying it's coming. It's coming because the numbers are here. Blockchain is coming for sure. But something better to know, it's already here. Because when you have a lot of buzzwords in one sentence, you like to put all the buzzwords in your sentence. You like to have blockchain, token, ICOs, crypto. That sounds very good. And actually, ICOs are already here. And the numbers are crazy, crazy. 5.6 billion dollars. Wow. That's a nice market to go for fighting with. I would <laughs> just, I guess you would love to fight for this kind of market. 5.6 billion dollars. But I guess right now you're just wondering, okay, nice. This is nice. Big market, big apple. But still don't understand what is the apple. And for sure you're not the only one. Usually, with my clients, the discussion is this one. They don't know anything about blockchain. I'm trying to pitch them blockchain. They don't understand, but they buy it because that's, this is sounding very good. And when you want to be sure, because from time to time, you know, there's one trying to do as if he was really understanding what we are talking about. And the, this, this, the discussion is really this one. And the, the thing which is painful, is that you may have seen in the news that the French government is trying to make Paris the capital of blockchain. I'm French, and I'm scared of the guillotine, by the way. No. Uh, so everybody was just wondering me how I could help them to seize the opportunity, because I was supposed to, to know. I was supposed to help them being head of Avas blockchain and being French. Wow. Difficult. I just propose you something very quick. I'm going to try a big challenge to explain you in very, very few time, because usually I'm lecturing blockchain technologies in different universities, and it takes me 50 hours. Today, I'm going to try in very, very few minutes, I'd say five minutes, to pitch you blockchain, and then token economy and ICOs, and last but not least, how it's going to change our industry. Wow. And I guess I'm going to lose you right now if I try to pitch blockchain. So let's forget blockchain technologies. And let's use something you may know about, which is a notebook. How many of you have 
heard and used a notebook. There's just one people? <laughs> wow, better. I, I, hopefully, I hope that everybody knew how to use a notebook. But I'm going to teach you how to use a notebook, because apparently you, know, you don't know. So using a notebook is just opening a notebook and then taking the first page and a pen. And then, basically, you write something. You could write, for example, let's say, cactus is a bad festival. I could. And the question is not, is it true? The question is, I cannot erase it, because that's the purpose of the pen and the notebook. It's secured. But we all know that Cactus is not a bad festival, so if we want to change it, we need to write something after that the purpose of the notebook. There are several lines. And I could write, for example, uh, no, I was joking. And let's be honest, a notebook is made for writing anything, so I could write anything. And I'm going to teach you something very, very interesting if you have never used any notebook. Basically, using a notebook at the end of the page, because you are a good student, you are proofreading yourself. I, forget, I forgot actually the S of cactus at the beginning. And then you do something unusual. You turn the page and you continue. That's how we use a notebook. OK. So basically, when I'm writing something, it's secured one way because I cannot erase it. I'm proofreading it's very secured. And all my pages are linked, so it's pretty secure. Nice and transparent, because I'm sharing the notebook with you, actually. So the page is my block, block of data. And all my pages, have a look, are linked with a very secure device, very strange device, a chain. So for forget the blockchain, it's a notebook. Page is a block, chain is a chain. OK. You you're just thinking of something right now, which is, OK, it's a digital notebook. But actually, yes, it is. But you're not scared. Because a digital notebook is just a word, and everybody here probably use a word. Have you heard Microsoft Word once in your life? No? OK, I'm losing you. <laughs> yes, you did. And you probably use something else. You probably use, for sharing the document, Google Drive. Even more complicated, I guess. No, it's just a document which is shared. So this notebook is digitalized and shared between all the people in the room. Is it complicated? Not really. Just a shared version of this paper notebook which is digitalized. The only difference between my notebook and the Google Drive notebook is that the notebook of Google Drive is actually stored in Google. And I have absolutely nothing against Google. But if I want to hack a server at Google, it's not very difficult. It's not easy neither, but it's not impossible. While my notebook is not stored at Google, Microsoft, or anywhere, it's actually stored on my computer and on each of your computers. It is a decentralized notebook, meaning for hacking it, I need actually to hack at least half of the notebooks which are stored in your computers. Decentralized, transparent, because it's shared, it's shared, and secured. That's actually the three purposes of blockchain technologies. Here we go. You, right now, understand what is blockchain, and you are just upset because it's just a notebook. <laughs> Normal. But what could we do with such a notebook, which is called blockchain because it's better? Well, basically, you can do plenty of things. Let's imagine we are in a country like, I don't know, Ghana, in Africa, and once in a while, there is a coup. If you are a good dictator, that's a lesson to, to know if you want to, to go for, for being a dictator. First thing to do is actually just go to destroy the cadaster, because with no more landowner, you are the boss. And in Europe, just to let you know, most of the cadastres are per provision. In France, it's paper. If you want to secure your cadastre 
and avoid the first dictator to come to burn the cadaster, you can digitalize. But actually, if you digitalize the cadaster, it's stored in the server, and the server is in your country. So if you are a good dictator, actually, you know that you just need to burn the server, and that's not more difficult to burn the server than paper. But now, just keep in mind, if the notebook is stored in thousands of millions of computers, it's going to be much more difficult to burn one by one all your computers, especially if you are not just in Ghana, but all over the world. That's the purpose of blockchain technologies, securing data. But I forgot to mention something that you all know, because usually when I'm talking about blockchain technology, the first word which is coming is, come on, guys, you're sleeping. Bitcoin, crypto. As soon as I'm in a room, everybody's thinking that I'm a crypto guy, and that's why I'm dressing like this, because I'm not, I'm not a geek, actually. Sorry for this. Uh, the point is that when you are turning pages, you are very lazy. It's heavy paper. No, it's not, but you're a computer, so you're using energy. And if you are using energy to turn pages, you're not going to do it for free when proofreading some code. So basically, if your notebook is called Bitcoin, I'm going to give you for a little bit of money, a value that I'm creating right now with the, the notebook, that I'm going to call Bitcoin. If my notebook is called Cactus, for turning some pages, I'm going to create some Cactus coin to give you and, com and compensate the energy you are going to take to turn pages, because nothing is free. And actually, this value, this digital asset, this digital money, is wonderful, because for the first time, there is no fee, no commission, and no bank involved. So it's going to transform for real the economy, and you're going to be able to do things that you have no idea. But keep in mind something. If somebody is coming to you, selling you blockchain and crypto as a miracle, or more usually, as a magic wand, they are lying to you. They are scammers because it's just and only, and now I guess you know it, a notebook. So basically, if people are coming to you and make you feel like blockchain technologies are going to revolution something, just keep in mind the notebook has never revolutioned anything. It is transforming usage, it is transforming industries, and it will, and it is, and I'm going to show you how it is. But it's not how, it's not big enough for just not being a notebook. OK, let's talk about something pretty different right now. Let's forget the notebook, let's forget the blockchain, and let's imagine something else. Let's imagine, I don't know, I don't know if there is a, a, a plane airline between Serbia and between Belgrade and Beijing. Let's imagine there's not. And all of us want to go to Beijing for I don't know which reason. There is. Plenty of things to do. First, you can take another line and go through any other airport, for sure. But let's imagine I want to create the line, but I have no money. How could I do? I could do a lot of things. I could, for example, do crowdfunding. I could go to meet VCs and ask money from the VCs. I could. But we could do something much more fun, let's say. Yes, we could go fun, and one of the things we could do is kind of crowdfunding. I'm going to pre-sale some miles. You're going to buy my miles because you believe in my project, you believe I'm going, I'm a sustainable project, I'm going to make the line, and then for very cheap, because I'm going to be nice with you, I'm going to give you for very cheap the miles at the beginning, and then you will be for cheap able to use the line. And then, when the airline will be existing, if you want to use the line, good for you. And if you don't want, because you're just a speculator, basically you will be able to resell your miles to somebody else, but the mile will have taken value, because the line will be existing, meaning it won't be a project, it won't be participating to the financing of a project, but basically, very simple, using a service. This kind of pre-sale sounds very old-fashioned, and it is. But the interesting point is probably that you can do it right now 
with a very different tool. You can do it basically with a decentralized model. And you're probably wondering how big it is, what does it mean, because decentralized means probably nothing. It is. Basically, just imagine you want tomorrow, and I will retake this example later, to participate to the funding of, I don't know, a new LinkedIn. Nobody is going to believe you. No trust. Now, if you are proposing a, a system which is autonomous, with a real system, well, people might not believe you, but if there is a real use, why not? That's the market. If there is demand, if there is offer, the only step missing is probably a reputation. You're, you're seeing where, where I'm going. The interesting part is that when you are presiding a service, we are usually not speaking of miles in the vocabulary, strange vocabulary. A mile or anything, any access to a service is usually called a token. But it could be anything. Why token? Because actually, when you are using a trolley, you are pre-buying a token for using the service. Same with a metro station. You're pre-buying a ticket and then using it. Or you can give it to a friend if you're not. And the interest is that this system, which sounds weird, based on one kind of money, which is fully digital, no commission, no fee, fully digital, targeting young people, well, you have a package for financing business model over thousands, hundreds of thousands million dollars. And that was the point earlier. $5.6 billion raised using this kind of very simple and old-fashioned way of financing, basically presenting pre a service, using the service then when the service is, is existing. And you're probably, probably feeling strange, because basically I'm telling you that it's very easy to make money. It is. And that's probably unfortunate. And that's actually probably why the founder of one of the biggest blockchain existing, Vitalik Buterin, which is even younger than I am, uh, is considering that 90% of this kind of operation, because the funding through a token is usually called ICOs because they just wanted to copy IPOs for I don't know which reason. 90% are scams. 90%. Well, this means that there is still 10% which are not. And the interesting point is that these 10% are pretty interesting because they are not coming anymore from little startups. They are not coming anymore from little projects. They are not coming anymore from little SMEs. They are coming to you through your clients. It is. And I'm going to show you why, and I'm going to show you how. But first, let's focus on one thing. If there is so many, so many scams, how do I spot the good one to invest in? How do I make sure that my project is a good one? And that's something pretty interesting, because usually for any financial operation, your banker is telling you but there is no bank. Your lawyer is telling you, but they don't have any clue. Big fours are telling you, but they have no idea. Right now, you are the guys. Communication guys are the guys, because the key is the reputation of project. If you make me believe in your project, I will invest a little bit. And this will be very easy, and I'm not taking a lot of risk, because anyway, anyway it's digital, meaning it's liquid. I can resell very easily if I don't believe you anymore. And I can probably, if I want, just get rid of my token if I don't trust you anymore. If the reputation is your key, the question is how to make this reputation. And yes, I could talk about, during hours on hours, about advertising being transformed by blockchain, about corporates facing these new models. But the interesting point is probably something different. It's a focus about how to make a reputation in the crypto world. There's two ways, traditional and new kind of ways. And I'm not going to focus on about what you already know. Yes, advertising is a very nice tool. Yes, PR is all, already a very nice tool. Social media, is it right? Could... But there's something else. You remember earlier 
when I said, I'm going to pre-sell yourself, I'm going to pre-sell a token, which was a mile for my airplane company. I was actually the one, the only one, there is no bank anymore. I am the only one deciding how many tokens I'm going to sell to fundraise the fund. And basically, if I'm the only one to decide how many tokens we are talking about, I can keep a little bit of these tokens just for you, for me, or for something else. But I'm going always to keep a little bit of these tokens for one thing that you probably forgot to make for free, because I'm actually building from nothing this token. It, no cost, no cost. I'm using these tokens to create my reputation from scratch. And I'm going to show you right now how it's working. Blockchain technologies are decentralized, meaning they are replacing the bank. I am the one empowered to make the token economy. I am the one deciding how many tokens. I am the one deciding the value of the project. Then I can decide to pick a little bit of the token to finance something which is my reputation, and I'm going to show you how I'm going to do what is usually called a bounty campaign, but it's, it's nothing else than the traditional ambassador campaign. Basically, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to give you free token if you, I set up the rules, follow my Twitter, follow my Facebook, follow, I don't know, follow um, my Telegram, rate me on a website, write about me, tell me what you're thinking, interact with me, just to check that it's, you are the right person. You're sending me the, the, all the elements to prove that you actually are a real people, and then that you fill the rule, and then I'm giving you free money, free token. And these free tokens are real value as soon as the project is existing. And the interesting part is, remember, I told you something. The value of token are based on three things. Offers, demand, and actually, reputation. So basically, if I give you free token, this means that I'm giving you a value that you can make increase yourself just participating to the reputation of the token. Basically, I'm giving you free value, and the value will increase if you are talking about it. That's called turning your people interested, your future clients, into your best ambassadors, because in very, very few time, you can turn people into your ambassadors for no cost. And this is said, this seems very strange, this seems very unusual, this seems very weird, probably not working, I guess. We did a first try with a first client. In seven hours, starting Paris hour, Belgrade hours, the morning, seven hours after, just have a guess. How many people, how many new ambassadors for free we were having? A few dozen? A few hundred? It was actually more than 10,000 ambassadors for free doing your repetition for you. I'm meaning that you are actually you having a new tool that you didn't have a clue, that your clients are just discovering, that are going to turn the reputation of all your clients, of all our economy, just because you can turn your future clients, you can turn your ecosystem, you can turn all the people interacting with your brand into actually your best ambassadors on from zero cost. Not bad. And I could continue for a while explaining you how banks are not afraid of blockchain and crypto because they know that these people are more powerful or more interesting for the brand than any, than any of the fears they could have. And I could continue explaining how corporates, I'm working for a range of corporates launching ICOs in 2019, and you would be amazed to discover that if you believe, if you believe that people have no clue about blockchain, just remember, everybody now knows that it's just an only a notebook, which is now really scary, because it's a digitalized version of something you are using every day. So, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry, because actually, I'm, you are probably upset. Blockchain technologies are just a, a notebook. 
but a notebook that can turn your ecosystem into your best ally. For this reason, we at Avas Group have developed a range of new tools for corporates. But these tools are not our tools, because by definition, they are decentralized. And you will be soon enough participating to this kind of campaign, even if you don't know about it. As 10 years ago, 20 years ago, you were participating actually without even probably knowing it to these new kind of infrastructures that today sounds very weird. When I mention TCP IP, nobody understands. But still, you are using it every day, and you don't have any clue about what it is, and nobody cares about the, the notebook. Everybody cares about the usage. So that's all for me. I hope that you better understand that blockchain is just a notebook which actually empowers our industry. And for the advertising, for the publishing, for all the other parts of the sectors, I will not talk about it today, because basically, that's another story long enough. Thanks.